Have you ever been a victim of identity theft? Well, one of our producers has. And with the current economy, resourceful thieves are more prevalent and desperate. Frank Abagnale is one of the most sought-after identity theft experts in America. His life was chronicled in the hit movie Catch Me If You Can. And now the FBI and firms around the world use him as a consultant to catch the most elusive criminals and identity thieves. He's here today to alert us their ways and to discuss identity theft prevention. Thanks for joining us, Frank. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Frank, what was it like to see Leonardo DiCaprio play you in the movie about your life? I, I thought he did a great job. I was very pleased. I didn't have a lot to do with the making of the movie, but I felt that uh, Steven Spielberg went out of his way to tell the story as accurate as he could. He had the three FBI agents that were retired on the set. Leonardo did a great job of portraying a young teenage boy who aged during the movie, and I thought he did an incredible job. I totally agree. And what are the most common mistakes people make when it actually comes to protecting their identity? Well, one is we still write a lot of checks, and we write checks to pay our bills. And one of the things that people do, they write a check to the gas company, and then they walk out in front of their house and put it in their mailbox, and they put the flag up for the mailman, and they go to work. Unfortunately, people drive neighborhoods looking for the flag up, they open the mailbox and they move out, take out a, a statement that you've written to the gas company, remove the check from the remittance envelope, and today they use household chemicals and a Q-tip and they remove who you made the check out to, they remove the amount of the check you wrote, but they leave your signature on the check. Then they make the check out to themselves or some third party and deposit it. Since most of us don't reconcile for at least 30 days when we get our bank statement, they're long gone with the money before you realize they've drained your account. So what I do is I write checks, but I always use a very simple pen called a Uniball pen. It's a very inexpensive, easy way uh, to protect yourself. And it uses a pigment ink. It's very smooth writing. But when I write with it, you can't chemically wash it. You can't change it. You can't alter it. Frank, that is such great advice. But what are the most common forms of identity theft? Well, people steal identities mainly to get credit card, people's, uh, credit card uh, in people's names. They steal them to get mortgage in your name, get a loan in your name get a job in your name, and ultimately commit a crime in your name. There are many people today that have stopped for speeding to find out they have an outstanding warrant for drugs or jumping bail in California because some criminal has used their identity to get booked under. And consequently, then they jump bail, and that person has an outstanding warrant on them. So there are lots of reasons that people steal identity, and there are many, many ways to steal one's identities. In order to do that, you only need someone's name, social security number, date of birth. And that's why it's also important to realize that you're only required to provide your social security number to a law enforcement officer upon their request, to a, a, a government agency, a municipality, a, a federal government, state government agency, to the social security administration, to a financial institution where you're getting a loan or opening a bank account, and to your employer when you get a job so they may withhold taxes. That's it. It really is scary. What new technologies are criminals using to rip off consumers? The biggest one, you know, every day there's a new technology that criminals find a loophole in it. Right now we've gone to so many wireless systems. Our cell phone is wireless, our laptops are wireless. If you're going to do online banking or bill paying or something that involves you giving away your identity or a password or your bank account information, don't do that on a wireless system because the wireless system is usually not very secure. Most systems are not encrypted. And when you do use your computer at home, make sure you have the proper firewalls and encryptions in that landline a computer and you keep yourself safe from that type of technology fraud. So where can people go to learn more about protecting their identities? You can go to uniball.com and you'll find a whole list of things you can do to protect your identity right there and you can print them out and you'll find some really good information there. Frank, thanks for this helpful information on how to protect ourselves. We appreciate your advice. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.